Representative Blackwell for yeah, the gentleman, members of the committee, thank you very much for having me. Also to all those who come to these meetings, the nameless legions who <laughs> sit in the chairs, that's where I usually am. Uh, I'm Andy Baxter, I'm with the group, the Southern Regional Education Board, based in Atlanta. We've been around since the 1940s, and since then, North Carolina has been one of 16 states that every year support the organization and in return we try to support states uh, and this is one of the primary ways states wrestling with questions uh, such that you're wrestling with and we try to position ourselves to be able to come and to let you know what other states are doing and, and what the research says and provide any thought support that we can so as i understand it you're uh dealing with a few simple questions and since this we're all recovering from thanksgiving and you guys are pretty hardcore to be doing this first thing on Monday morning after the after the Thanksgiving. I just thought I would refresh our minds on the task in front of us. So looking over the materials from your October 24th meeting, I believe it is, um, there's different ways to categorize these, but as, as I looked at it, you've got three kind of key questions. You know, how do we recruit and retain not just any principals, but high performing principals and assistant principals in general? but also and especially in hard to staff schools and districts uh, and in low wealth communities. <coughs> One of the things you're thinking about actively, you're not alone in this, would a mix of salary flexibility and financial incentives, would that allow LEAs to draw principals and assistant principals to the schools with the students who need them the most? spent uh, five years in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools and this is something that even just as a district we wrestled with constantly and how could you do number one or two without messing everything else up right like these things are as the social scientists would say these are always like in general equilibrium you do one thing and it can have trickle effects on something else oftentimes in ways that you didn't intend and reading through that kind of Byzantine evolution of the assistant principal salary schedule and you raise this and then you realize well but then that person might be making less than a teacher than they were you see how all that gets connected so the the meat kind of the policy wonkish uh the tail of what i have to offer is in a handout uh that i that you've got uh that looks at what is the research saying points to a few studies and what other states are doing. It has links to legislation, et cetera. Um, but, but the picture that I, I'm going to, going to let you all know about, the headline, before you delve into that, even though the title of this are best practices in the SREB states, I'm here to tell you there are no best practices to date. Uh, this area of compensation in general, but particularly principal compensation, is, is not been a road that many people have traveled. Uh, that they've put the emphasis when they have on teachers. Uh, and there, but, but there's been some action. We give you a list of all the things that different states are trying, but what's important is that sometimes you'll hear from people like me, and I'm guilty of this too, it's like, I've just been to Georgia, and they've told me about their new system. And I get all excited because I really like the person that I talked with, and they're excited about it. Everybody's excited. And so then I see you and I go, ah, now there's a best practice. When in fact, we don't know if it works or not. We just know that they've tried it. Uh, most of the things that we've listed in here are things that people are trying, and the jury's still out if they're working or not. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as you're just honest about where the state of the field is. So I would say that right now you're in a bit uh, of a pioneering mode. But there are lessons, I think, uh, that you can learn. So let's turn, let's turn to those. Sometimes when we turn to research and to bet to what other states are doing, it still feels like this. You get an academic off, uh, someone says, well, you know, it depends. It, it, the message is mixed, et cetera, et cetera. We don't know anything about this. And you're just left kind of holding up your hands and saying, well, why, I'm not sure why we had you here. There's not, there's not much uh, to say. So sometimes it can feel like this when you turn to it. I would say that in this situation, it's a little bit closer to this. You can see the outlines 
a direction. There's nothing in the evidence that says don't go there. Okay, this would be a catastrophic mistake, a waste of your time. It's not like that. There are some glimmers of hope, but it's complicated and it's nuanced. And the big thing that I would tell you is there is no blueprint out there. There's no place to go to Arkansas or to Tennessee or to Virginia, South Carolina, and say, do this and you will attract principals, you'll attract assistant principals, and students will flourish. I don't, I don't, and it, it's possible that the other speakers have a different read of the situation, but that's mine, I'm sticking to it. Here's an example of the kind of ambiguous nature of some of this. So we did a, a review of some of the literature. This was the, uh, the most scientifically valid random sample, random study uh, of the teacher incentive fund. Uh, they looked at 10 districts and they did a randomized thing. There were 10 districts and what they, what they did was they gave a 1% bonus to all the staff uh, teachers and principals each year and then they watch what happens with the students at those schools the other half of the sample they give a differentiated uh, bonus that the district sets um, and they urge those districts to make these bonuses substantial I think they were asking districts to make them at least 5% of the base pay that they would be differentiated so that at the people who got the top bonus were getting, I believe it was, they wanted them to get three times as much as the people who were the average people. I just did you that. And then challenging, not one of these like participation trophy kind of things, like something that was really hard to get. That was the, but they couldn't, that was what the fund asked of people, but they couldn't make them do it. They look over time, sure enough, in the treatment districts, they see some gains. Now these sound small, two percentile in math, one percentile in reading, but those translate in their metrics to about four weeks of learning in this study. That's kind of exciting. But as in most things like this, the real interesting part was that there was real variation among those 10 districts it, that in the gains, so there were average gains, but some places didn't gain very much at all, and some people gained a lot. And they tried to say, well, that's the real key. Let's try to figure out that. And when they went back and looked, did all the criteria that we thought were so important, did that predict which districts really knocked it out of the park? The answer was no. So they come out and they think, well, something happened here. We, yeah, because these districts, this was a good random assignment kind of thing, but we don't know exactly why it happened. So that makes it really hard for you. Was it the fact that it was teachers and principals giving a bonus? Was there something particular about those uh, teachers and principals. So that's the type of, that's pretty much the state of the literature. You go and look at the study, sometimes you're going to see no effect, sometimes a modest effect, uh, but nothing that you could say, we do this, it guarantees a work here. That's my read of the, of the evidence. So I'm going to offer you some uh, so some recommendations. Now, this is a giant picture of grains of salt because I want to say these are based on my experience both in Charlotte and the last four or five years at SREB and watching these programs uh, roll out. Here's what I would do if I were you or things to keep in mind. So the first is, so I, I looked over the the materials that you got at the first meeting of this and uh, and it, it's really good right like you got a lot of detail about the salary schedules the number of participants and how uh, the most fascinating fact if I got this right was that there were 1500 different salary steps for 2400 positions I think if, uh, so you know things like that it's amazing I would say it would also be important to get really clear and you have great data as North Carolina on this about the <coughs> retention rates of the and recruitment problems of principals in what particular areas what do you know about how long they stay how they move an analogy would be just like you got I read with great interest this report about teacher mobility and attrition recently and how a deeper dive in the data helped get really clear about some things that we thought were a problem, but then you look at it and realize, well, if it's a problem, it's a different sort of problem than what we thought. 
So I urge you to get that and to know that the, the department has really, really fantastic data uh, compared to a lot of states on this. The second, and this is always easy to say, but build the plan from the beginning with the people who will use it. And it's so easy to say. I say that, and I go, yeah, all right, that's good. But I still start brainstorming without the people. I still go forward with the plans, and in the end, I ask them for their buy-in, and it doesn't work very well. So hugely important, I would say. A third, the money is important. And I know like you will see surveys where principals say, I'm not sure what the psychedelic effect of this is, but, but maybe this is subliminally, this is kind of making more of an imprint in your brain, like flashes on and off or something. One of the things that uh, no one will ever say in education is, yeah, the money is really important. It just doesn't feel polite or it goes against the service ethic of it. Like, I get that. Um, I think the money is hugely important. But I would also say that other things are important too. As you think about what might work for uh, the enticed people, one thing that we found in Charlotte for sure is giving people a certain amount of autonomy when they can be in that role and the ability to choose some or all of the, their team were things that really did matter a lot for them uh, in addition to any kind of salary stuff. If you think about that in your own life, that probably would, would make sense. One of the findings of so many, this, is, this feels like something like a, a minister would say, the egalitarian ethos of education, right? But don't underestimate this. So a lot of places, I remember there was a famous thing in New York, that did it, this happened in Pittsburgh as well. They give bonus money, they allot bonus money to schools or to districts and say, you decide how you want to give it up. And what happens consistently is that people are reluctant to differentiate. In New York, the big experiment was everybody got this, almost every school decided to divide its bonus money up equally among all the teachers. So anything that goes on the premise that a local superintendent would be willing to pay this person sizably more than this person I'm not saying it won't happen, but there is a significant cultural kind of um, reticence towards that that I found in education. And that would be something you'd want to address, I think, head on from the start. I would, like you're doing with the advanced teaching career or advanced teaching roles, uh, I would start small and try to learn before I do something big over or across the whole schedule. I think your chances of minimizing the mistakes and learning from it as you go will be really strong there. And finally, I noticed that you're considering a range of measures, say for example, that uh, somebody could, that a district could use to, define, to decide whether or not um, a, a principal got a bonus, for example. I would always come back to this question, like are students going to be better off because of the work that is happening here through this program or this reform. Always come back to that. We have too many things, I, I think, in education that everybody, the, all the adults can end up having and morale high, uh, but the students aren't any better off at all. So I, that's something that I really hope uh, will take part. That's my name and contact information. If you have any questions, as you look through the handout, if there's anything that is very specific to um, a state, we can go and ask that state or get you in contact with their leading persons. Thanks again for the opportunity.